Hello, how are you guys? I'm Michelle, and this is Vanessa. Hi. <laughs> I'm the When I Grow Up coach. She's the opera singer. Hi. Yay. And we're here for Grown Up Gigs, um, which is a series that I run here on Streetcast once or twice a month, where we have an inside look at dream jobs held by real people. Ooh. I'm a real person. Oh, you're a real person who I know. Yeah. Um, and when I think of like who do I want to interview and who do we want to like hear about what they're oh no Jennifer you can't hear us um can anyone else hear us what is going on? I don't know can you hear us now can you hear can anyone hear us um Arwen could we still hear it okay okay Jennifer good. that might be yeah if you're using chrome not that you could hear this <laughs> um, if you're using chrome sometimes it's a crappy browser Oh. oh, so maybe it's the computer. Boo, I'd be really sad if you wouldn't be able to hear this. Um, oh, Jennifer just got engaged. Ooh. Yay. Yay. I'm two old married ladies. Um, so, you know, you'll always get the recording. Hopefully you could hear that. Hi, everyone who just joined us. Um, hopefully everyone else could hear us. If you uh, are on Chrome, probably get off of it because it's really wonky with the cast. Um, and Karen, to answer your question, um, I am the When I Grow Up coach, and Vanessa is an opera singer. Hi. And Vanessa's my guest on this free cast um, show. What's the name of the show? The show. Computer. It's a show that I do once or twice a month called Grown Up Gigs, and it's all about an inside look at dream jobs held by real people. So Vanessa is an opera singer and was like one of the first people that popped into my head when I was like, who would I want to talk to to hear uh -huh. like the real story about what it's like in your world and your career and like opera singer is so cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Pretty. It's very unexpected cool. when I meet new people and they're like, so what do you do? I say, oh, I'm an opera singer. They're like, do you love it? They you say, what do you really than... do? They say, what do you really do? What's your day job? Mm -hmm. And I go, I'm an opera singer. And then they go like, wow. Ah, really cool. their mouth does. You know, I love that. I wish you yeah. could like get the expression of every single person. And you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's all yeah, no, that's, I do. That's what I do. That's yeah. all I do. Yeah, um, I it's get, pretty funny. I get the same thing when I tell people I'm a life. And then they go, you make money from that. <laughs> right. You make money from that? Yes. Yes. Um, hilarious. So uh, Arwen is our producer, and she's in the chat to help you guys out with anything technical that you might need. Um, and we want to encourage everyone to submit questions. So please. Um, Oh, I guess we'll louder. get closer. Oh my God, no one's ever told me to talk louder in my whole. Entire me either. Life. Um, I'm such a loud talker. Okay, hopefully. Is that better, is better, Karen? Is better? Or Karan? Karan? I don't know if we pronounced your name right. Um, but you guys will see that there's a submit question button um on your screen, and we absolutely, positively, one million percent want you to submit your questions. Um, do not hesitate to ask us anything along the way. I like to kind of break throughout the hour to answer questions, so it's not like we're going to wait until the last 15 minutes to answer your question. As soon as we see something come up and there's like a break in the in the talk, um, then we're going to put anything you know, that's not inappropriate um, on the screen and answer away. So please feel free to submit a question. And again, if you have any sort of technical problems or anything like that, just uh, write something in the chat, and Arwen, my producer, will get to you. Um, and Arwen, if you could put the my URL and Vanessa's URL in there, um, that would be great. And you guys could check out our websites and see more what we're about. More what we do. Uh -huh. Okay, so I have to start because I'm the one I grow up coach. It's my legal duty to ask you, Vanessa, what you wanted to be when you grew up. When you were a kid. Well, there were two things yeah. um the first was a scientist i really really wanted to be a scientist really i really wanted to to be a no, geneticist was, what yeah I was studied. that like a mr wizard sort of thing were you into mr wizard or like no, what I really no i was like a science geek as a kid i was totally into science that and blows my mind studied. a little bit i have to tell you yeah i took like college courses in biological sciences and Stuff at the university, you know, local university when I was in high school. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to be was a ballet dancer, and I was a, you know, sort of pre-professional 
studying very uh, seriously to be a ballet dancer, and then I grew. I'm five foot ten, so big you're not allowed down. to be a ballet dancer. <laughs> ballet. If you're that tall, and uh, right. And so then I was going to go back to school to continue with my science studies. And my very wise mother convinced me to go to school to study music. Ah, oh, interesting. Unexpected, right? Uh -huh. Yes. And her point was, you can go back to school to study science anytime. You can decide when you're 50. If music uh -huh. didn't work out, you can go back to school and do science. It's never too late to do that, but there's a window of opportunity where you can figure out if opera is going to work for you, if it's going to mm -hmm. make you happy, if you're going to be good enough. There's like a window of time in your life where you can do that, and if you miss it, it's gone forever. I was like, Mom, you're so smart. How can I say no? She's kind of like <laughs> opposite mom. Best um, mother ever. I, yes. I mean, seriously, like she wins a mom award, and yes. kind of the opposite of. I think moms that come from places of like fear, you know, right. and I and I had a really supportive mother and parents and family with my musical theater dream, um, which they knew nothing about. Mm. Like they, were, I did not come from a musical or a really creative family in that sort of sense, um, and they were supportive. But I think they would have been so happy if I said to them, like, no, I don't want to go to school be for a musical financial theater. Analyst. I want to go for right. science. They'd be like, yeah, she wants to go for science. Right. Great. Um, so amazing that your mom, like, wanted you to follow this dream. Yeah. And, and said, like, no, it's just time to do it. Yeah. And, I mean, that was that was her point was, you know, the fallback fall, fall career. Mm -hmm. She's like, that can happen any time. Mm -hmm. They're not going to throw you in prison uh -huh. if you don't pay off your student loans you know she's like not the end of the um, world I love it they're I not you know my parents have never really been motivated by money my dad works in the in the arts mm -hmm. um I have my brother's an artist mm -hmm. so we come from a sort of artistic artistically minded uh -huh. family and I think they just cared more about me being a fulfilled whole person than than you know like who cares what kind of clothes I wear? Right. If I live in a nice house, I don't right. care. Right. Right. So anyway, so that was my mom. Thanks, mom. You're the best. Oh, I love you. Oh, yay, mom. And um, and so I went to college, mm -hmm. study music, and I was there for a few years, not taking it super seriously. Mm -hmm. Because I kind of was like, well, my mom said I should do <laughs> And then when I was 20, I, I had kind of a eye-opening, like, wow, maybe I could really do this. Ooh. Gosh. Was there something in particular that opened yes. you up to that? Tell us. Okay. So I sang in a master class um, with a, a pretty well-known uh, collaborative pianist. Mm -hmm. In case you don't know, in, in opera world, there's a sort of a field of, of people who play the piano who specialize in accompanying singers, mm -hmm. and they don't just accompany us, they, we're like teens. Mm -hmm. We make music mm -hmm. together, they work as coaches. Um, this woman's name is Margo Garrett, and she's a very well-known uh, collaborative pianist mm -hmm. and coach in opera world, and she did a, a master class. Mm -hmm. And um, the song I sang was a Rachmaninoff song, which was originally in Russian, but I didn't sing it in Russian because I didn't know Russian. Okay. And it was really hard to sing in Russian. Oh, I think so. Uh huh. And so we did the whole class, and then at the end of it, she said, "So why didn't you do it in Russian?" And I came up with some bold answer <laughs> uh, to kind of cover cover my butt. But the honest answer inside my head was because the Russian's really hard. Mm -hmm. And I felt so stupid. I couldn't believe that that was why I had not done mm -hmm. something uh -huh. like. I didn't do this right because it was hard. Like, I'm going to be a failure in life if that's, in no matter what I do, if that's really, uh -huh. like, my attitude uh -huh. Uh -huh. about stuff. And it kind of ignited this fire in me. And I thought, like, God, I don't ever want that to be the reason I do anything not with my whole self ever again because it's hard. Like, that is the stupidest thing. I would rather have worked really hard at it and had it been terrible. Mm -hmm. And gotten help from someone who knew what they were doing in Russian, then just feeling, well, that's hard, so I'll just do it in English. So 
So anyway, I suddenly realized like, wow, this is like an incredibly challenging, mm-hmm. uh, you know, career that will always keep me engaged, will always keep me interested. There's always more to learn. It's always harder work mm-hmm. and how sort of exciting. And I was like, wow, I want to be a singer. Uh, it sounds like it kind of hit like your sense of pride too. Mm-hmm. Probably. You know, yeah. that it was like, oh my God, I can't, am I really going to be working with this well-known woman? Am I really going to stay like, you know, doing this? <laughs> it was hard. Well, I think it was so, like hearing that voice in my head uh-huh. saying, well, it was really hard. I just felt so, um, it was so loud. Right. It, like, it was such right. a loud statement. It resonated so hard within me. And I thought, I mean, I had a moment where I thought, well, did I not? Did I think it was hard and I didn't want to do the hard work because I don't want to be a singer? Mm. And so that's why I don't want to do the hard mm. work because I don't care about this. Or is it because I'm like lazy <laughs> and I don't <laughs> want to do anything if it's hard work? And it was kind of that. It was kind of like, I don't want to have to work hard at anything oh. ever. Which might just be the teenage mentality. Right, except then I was 20. Oh, right. And I was like, well, I'm an adult now. I'm growing up. Like, that's. Life is hard. Right. Like it's. Especially if you want to. Well, but. Something creative. Like that's, that's a nothing but. But any. Effort. But, Although it's still pleasure and whatever. But anything. Everything is hard. Yeah. If you want to be a mom, that's yeah. hard. Yeah. If you want to be a trophy wife, that takes <laughs> work. Okay. <laughs> like that is hard work. No matter what you choose to do. I mean, some days are easy, some jobs are easier than others, but mm-hmm. if you want to be happy and you want to feel like your life is worth something, it takes hard work all the time, no matter what you do. And I just, I, it was like I heard it in that moment. It was like my whole life was revealed to me, and I was like, it doesn't matter what I do, I have to want to work hard. And so then I thought about working hard being a singer, and I realized it was work I would love to do. Uh, and love now I'm a singer. I Yay. love this. There's like tweetables already. We're talking for 12 minutes. Hi, Ron like, I see you saying hi. Hi. And yeah, sh- come on. Hi, babe. We're not, this is not, come on. Let's all get it together. <laughs> um, this is weird. This is, this is weird. I have to be honest with you. Usually uh, the people that I see in my room of gigs are like people that I know. And I don't know, there's these guys popping up. I don't know where you're coming from, but make sure you behave yourself if you want to hang out with yourself. Um, the strangest chat ever. <laughs> Jennifer's totally right. This is usually not the audience that we that we have, but yeah, yeah, I, don't, I don't have no idea. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of people coming in and out. I think yeah. I don't know. Maybe they think we're gonna, gonna make out. I don't, I don't know. know. We're not making out. No, it's not happening. Uh, <laughs> it's so weird, though. Okay, I want to put this question up. It's so open ended, um, and he doesn't seem like he's here anymore. But like, I want to be a singer. How do I go about that? I, I mean, this is like what we're going to talk about for the next forty five minutes. Right. And feel free, everyone, to ask kind of more specific <laughs> sort of questions. But if we're if we're specifically talking about being an opera singer, is there anything that you would say you know needs to happen, or you think would be like the best route? to getting a starting career for yourself? Yeah, you have to have a good voice teacher. Mm. Full, mm. full stop, period, mm-hmm. at end mm-hmm. of sentence. Mm-hmm. You have to have a, a good voice teacher, and finding a voice good voice teacher mm-hmm. can be a challengingly long process. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a few. Some yeah. have been better than others. The one I'm with now is great mm. and has really sort of transformed the way I sing and I'm feeling joyful and excited about singing again, mm-hmm. which I didn't for a while mm-hmm. because it was hard because I wasn't working with the right teacher. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, but yeah, you have to have a good voice teacher. If you want to be, you know, sing in different styles of music, having a, a voice teacher is definitely helpful mm-hmm. um, because at the end of the day, you just have to be good. Like, if you're good at what you do, finding opportunities to get up and sing in front of people isn't actually as hard as you might think it is. Um, but it doesn't matter if you get those opportunities if you suck. When you get up and you sing for the people, you have to be really 
good. And the way to do that is to find someone who really knows what they're doing. So they can help you with moving yourself. So how 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 do you find how it sounds like it's um it's as much of a personal connection and an ease in working with someone as it is probably their credentials and their experience. That's very true. You have to feel very comfortable with them. You have to like them. Uh -huh. You have to feel supported and challenged by them. It's sort of like any good relationship. Um, but they also have to really know what they're talking about. And there's a lot of people who become voice teachers because they were really good singers themselves. Mm. And they had um, really good careers, and their careers are now over. Uh -huh. But they don't actually know how to teach. Mm. And so sometimes you'll find sort of teachers who seem like they have these really big sort of famous credentials, but then they aren't actually very good. So, so how do you start weeding people out or sort of, you is there like try a, them. Yeah, okay. you have to try them out. Okay. You have to, you know, ask around and, um, a good thing to do is to find singers who you like, mm -hmm. listen to a lot of people have stuff up on YouTube now. A lot of people have, you know, stuff up on their websites now. And so you can go and listen. And when you find someone whose voice you really like, if you can get in touch with them and find out who their teacher is. Uh -huh. Or find out if they have any recommendations. That's a good thing. Mm, that's, that's how I found my teacher was a colleague of mine, mm -hmm. who I love the way she sings, and she's so good. Right. And I was not um, real happy with who I was with, mm -hmm. and she told me, "God, what with my guy." So that's Yay! So now it's true love. Yes, it really is true love. But it seems like it takes some digging. It does. And some trying out in order to make sure that you're a good fit. I mean, I guess it's kind of like hiring anyone. It's for kind a of position. like I've it's, been told it's kind of like a therapist. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's kind of like, yeah, you have to feel safe and comfortable mm -hmm. and supported, but it's not just someone who's going to say yes all the time. Mm -hmm. they yes. Have to help yes. you dig and work through stuff. So, how important like getting your degree um is uh, it you know how important is education in like a i guess a more traditional sense to being hired and being taken seriously in the industry that's a really complicated question ah, um, lay, it, lay it on us as okay much as well as you want <laughs> now that i'm far on the other side of that um i've been out of school for you know 15 years mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I didn't really learn anything in school mm -hmm. that helped me at all in any way in my professional career. That's a bold statement. And I wish when I moved to New York at 18, instead of going to school, I had just taken voice lessons and coaching and learned from the professionals in my field mm. who don't work in school systems. However, <laughs> I don't know how I ever would have found those people right, had right, I not right, gone right, to school. Right. So when I say I didn't learn anything that has helped me professionally, that's not 100% true because I met people okay. who have, since I've been out of school, have helped me professionally. Or people who I went to school with who are now professional colleagues. Okay. Who we have that history with. Um, mm. So, like, if I could go back in time knowing everything I know now and knowing all the people I know now and knowing the network of people that make up my industry, I wouldn't go back to school. Right. I would undo that. Right. I get it. I but get I don't it. know how I would ever, I would never have been able to show up in New York, uh, you know, off the bus at 18 <laughs> right. and know who the right people were to take lessons from. And so it is a safe place. Start. It sounds like it's a good start. It's like where you where you sometimes have to start in order to build those connections and find those people and be part of that network. That's possible. I'd like to believe that that's not true. Yeah. I'd like to believe there are other ways to do it. I'm glad I have a bachelor's degree, but I'm glad uh -huh. I went to NYU. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I, I have a college degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, because I can't imagine now being in my 30s and being like, oh, I never went to college and not having like a bachelor's, at least a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but I didn't really learn anything in music school. That was well, and I, I mean, I really learned how to be a musician mm -hmm. when I left school and I started working. Amazing. Yeah, and I couldn't believe when I actually started working professionally, I could not believe how steep the learning curve was mm -hmm. and how much I had left to learn. I could like I literally went home and cried <laughs> after my first my first professional I mean, job, my first day of rehearsal. I was like, "What did I just spend the last six years of my life doing?" Um, and this is NYU, like, I don't you know. guys, and I'm an NYU alumni too. Like this is not Schlock University. No, I went this to NYU like... and I went to graduate school in, at Manhattan School of Music, and I don't want to badmouth those schools or those programs. It's not like they're not good programs, but I I really had no idea what of the information they were teaching me was valuable and what mm -hmm. of it wasn't until I found myself in a professional setting yeah. and suddenly realized that like 90% of what I had learned in school and spent hours doing homework on also was like meant nothing. nothing. What was the disconnect do you think? Like what, how, how could that curriculum just be so, I don't know if it's like out of date or just so off the know. mark? I don't know, I wish I had a good answer if I had a good answer for that, I'd go <laughs> to school and make a million dollars. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. And I, so I don't know if it's that there's specific things. I don't know. I yeah, have no, yeah, I have yeah, no answers. Yeah. yeah, but it seems like, and, and I'm always kind of interested in this because I think that you know, I, usually my clients fall like outside of the college age, so I mean, like mid forties mm -hmm. for the most part, and I think sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and keep thinking certain sort of flow. So you have to follow, you're supposed yes. to follow. Like, yeah. oh, you can't do this until you go to school, until you have your bachelor's, until you get your master's, blah 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 blah. So I can't go on this path, or people aren't going to take me seriously, or blah blah blah. And so it kind of sounds like, from what I'm hearing, if you could be um, if you could kind of educate yourself in terms of who can help you, um, even locally or whatever, if you want right. to move to a new city for this, come to New York City by all means, but like no need to, <laughs> no need to spend your time and your money in NYU um, as long as you are good and find the right tools to for you right. and work hard and like kind of make your own curriculum in a way. Right, exactly. Well, and, you ha and they have to be people who you know, are themselves networked in the sense that there are some, um, like young artist programs, uh, one of the very common steps that opera singers take is a lot of opera companies have sort of a training program for uh -huh. young artists, uh -huh. um, where you do a lot of singing in the chorus, you mm. cover secondary roles, you get coachings, you get performance opportunities, and a, there are huge numbers of applications uh -huh. for those young artist programs, uh -huh. and so you have to send in an application with like what your educational background is, mm. with recommendations from teachers and coaches, what your performance history is, and so okay. they don't give auditions to everyone. Oh, interesting. So in that sense, if you say, I go to Juilliard, you're, you're probably going to get audition, at least right? an audition. So if you didn't, if you never enrolled in one of those programs, you likely would have to have a teacher who mm -hmm. was very well connected, mm -hmm. who could write you a recommendation and say, look, I know this kid is not in one of these prestigious conservatories, but I really think you should give this person an audition. So it's, I mean, there are benefits to doing it, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. Well, I don't know that I would recommend it to everyone. You know, it's it's interesting. I feel like the perception that kind of um, the people that do the hiring have of some of these conservatories and, and music programs aren't necessarily um, the right, aren't in alignment. <laughs> um, because I always felt like, the fact that I had NYU Tisch School of the Arts musical theater on my resume was a big door opener for right. me. But, um, and the training I got, I felt good about the training I got from them, but they didn't really teach a lot about like what I needed to bring to my audition, which was like hired. Right. Yeah, isn't that But that should so be like. So weird. Right. I mean, we would have like audition classes, but everyone was kind of put in the same sort of like. Like where here's here's what you wear. Like here's we have one like audition, you know, class. It wasn't what do you need to do to sell your never, products? Never, right. never, never, never. Well, but also like the the lifestyle of it. Mm -hmm. So much of being good at being a singer is learning how to 
function within the context of the lifestyle of the singer. Oh, and yes. You can't learn that until you do it. So okay. So let's talk about this. This is a great transition. So the lifestyle of a of an opera singer. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And we're gonna lose all these all these things. <laughs> okay. Um, we're not making out, you guys. Yeah. Um, lifestyle of an opera singer is it depends. It depends whether you're away on a gig uh -huh. or whether you're at home learning a role. Okay. Uh, if you're away on a gig, you are sleeping in an unfamiliar place, mm -hmm. sometimes in a homestay. Opera mm -hmm. doesn't have a ton of money, so they don't okay. always put us up in hotels. Sometimes wealthy patrons will open up their homes, mm -hmm. so you're like a guest in a stranger's home, which is can be great and can be terrible. Awkward. <laughs> great um, or awful. Great uh -huh. or awful or awkward or sometimes not bad but awkward. It, it's just always strange. Um, you're away from your spouse or partner if you have one. Mm -hmm. You are sleeping in an unfamiliar bed. You're driving in a town you've never driven before. You are in an environment that might suddenly have allergies you've never, you know, allergens uh -huh. you've never been exposed to. Um, it's just, it's really, it's hard to mm -hmm. the road. Um, when you're at home and you're learning a role, you, I mean, my normal day is like I wake up in the morning at like eight. Yeah. And I have a cup of coffee and breakfast and I start warming my voice up. It takes me about an hour to kind of get my, just wake up. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I warm my body up. A lot of physical work. I don't know this, you know, whole concept of like opera singers is like big, fat people. Not anymore. I don't know. I don't even know how. Not anymore. I don't even get it. Like I have to work so hard to keep my body in shape mm -hmm. to do what I do. Mm -hmm. I don't. I couldn't be. I don't even know how people get that big. <laughs> I really don't. Um, but I. So I. You know. I. I work out and I exercise and then I start really warming up and I warm up and practice like technique stuff mm -hmm. for probably an hour. Okay. And then I work on rep, like my actual audition rep, and actually practicing singing. How do I? How do I hit that note? Mm -hmm. You know, within the context of the song I'm singing. For like maybe two hours, and then I spend another two or three hours learning new music, which often just sitting at the piano and plunking out notes. You're an athlete. I'm an athlete. I'm an athlete. I mean that's that's how I describe it. It's like that's what I'm an it athlete. is. I mean, yeah. training, training for like five hours a day, five or six hours a day. So, mm -hmm. so that's what it's like. That's what it's like when you are at a gig or when you're. When you're at home learning at music, home. when you're at a gig, you usually have anywhere between, it depends on the day, but uh -huh. usually we'll have anywhere between like three and nine hours of rehearsal a day. It also depends on union gigs. We only have six hours of rehearsal a day, non-union right. gigs. All bets are off. Uh -huh. you, have a lot more. you never know. Right. Um, but you then, you know, wake up and you warm your voice up and you warm your body up and you go to rehearsal and either do music rehearsal with the conductor or yeah. staging rehearsal with the director yeah. and you put the show together and we have to sing a lot of donor groups and things. Okay. Where you then after a day of rehearsal you go to um like a din like a fancy dinner where yeah. all the donors for the opera company because we're very dependent upon donors. <laughs> right, donor right, oh I'm sure. Donors and we sing sort of, you know, opera's greatest hits yeah. often or selections from the opera that we're they're doing. Mm-hmm. Try to get them to give more money, right? Which, open their checks, open their wallet. Their ongoing, <laughs> much appreciated, grateful support. You're so PC about it. The about opera. It. No, but it's great. I mean, we love our fans, you know, because like if we don't have people to sing for, we don't have a job. So mm -hmm. uh -huh. we, you know, that whole thing about like love your fans and support your support the people who love what you do. Fabulous. That's, you have to do that and make them happy. Fabulous. Um, I'm glad I've never, I've never had like this. I'm sorry, I can't get, I can't get over who's here right now, um, because I know you guys probably really aren't interested in what we're talking about, <laughs> and you're kind of, it's, it's a little, it's a little like creepy, um, and weird, honestly. Don't like submit a question and say call me. That's really weird. Um, what are we talking about? What we're talking about is uh, Vanessa's um, job as an opera singer and what it's really like to be an opera singer. 
good. I want to call all this out so everyone leaves because it's really like it's so weird that this is this is what's going on. Jennifer, thanks for staying with us. I know it's really crazy, Hi, but I'm glad that you're still here and everyone wasn't scared by you. Everyone else. Everyone else. wasn't scared by that you weren't scared by everyone else. Um, and so, oh my God, I'd be happy to just be talking to you. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Oh, Jennifer's great. She's in Brooklyn, too. Um, oh, I can't wait to see your doodles. Um, I was telling Vanessa about your doodles before we started. So, um, Jennifer, I know that you, I, unless, unless there's something that I don't know about you, um, you don't necessarily want to be an opera singer, but feel free to ask um, any questions you want to ask me about anything that I am creative and blah, 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 anything that, that can help you um, with your So yeah, we're we're just gonna keep on keeping on. Um just keep talking. We're just gonna keep talking. So the lifestyle and I'm and I so am with you on that. Um it's really hard to know when you do your school in high school and then you go into like a program and you're you know, and you're like, Yes, forever. Right. You're not gonna know how much you enjoy it until you do it. And then I think there might also be a point, and this is what happened to me personally with like new stuff little stuff is I was 22. I was like, yeah, I'm let's go it. everywhere and let's like get paid 100 bucks a week and let's right. like sleep in a bunk and a thing in a cabin and a you know and and sometimes um, I had a gig in Key West and I stayed at this tiny house and it was pretty awesome. It was a whole floor. Um and uh, and that was great. And then there are times you just get like, oh, this is the housing from uh, right. Uh, um, and there might be a time where as you get older, you kind of have less and less of a tolerance for that. Well, and people sort of often partner up and, uh -huh. you know, being, you know, 25 and single and uh -huh. on the road and going to meet new people is not the same thing when you have a husband back at home mm -hmm. who you're away from for a month at a time and, you know, mm -hmm. it changes the dynamic. Uh -huh. I get it. So what is that? I mean, not to delve into, like, totally whatever territory, but... Um, has there been a point that you're like, maybe you need to have more interim gigs or like daily, you know, yeah, all the time. And it, it's not, I mean, it's hard because opera is like you got to travel to do it. Yeah. It's a very, very international business. Yeah. And it just comes with the territory, but it's definitely, um, every time I go away on a gig, I'm like, is this really worth it? Uh huh. And usually by the end, I feel like it is. Yeah. But when I first get there, I'm almost always like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Where's my husband? Yeah. But ultimately, it's I always it. feel like it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, and tell Jennifer, whoever else is here legitimately, um, about your last experience when you went out of town because it's so cool and amazing. And I was, you mean when I was on a billboard on yeah. the highway? Yes, my that's exactly was on what I mean. On yes. the uh -huh, uh -huh. So, Jennifer, yeah. I was in. Um, <laughs> in El Paso, Texas, doing the Barber of Seville. And they got a, I think they got a grant, like an advertising grant. Yeah. So they had all this money that they had to spend on advertising. Yeah. And um, they they used my face on all the posters, on the, the program, and I was also on two billboards on the highway. Ah, that's amazing. And, and they were on the highway. El Paso, you know, is right near Juarez. And um, with, oh, with your consent, consent. Well, I mean, I knew they didn't ask my permission, but yeah. I knew <laughs> I knew it was happening. Um, and uh, so the the highway from Juarez to El Paso is where the huge border crossing is. Oh. Like the I don't know how many lanes, like forty lanes or sixty lanes. Or oh whatever, my the god! Huge, the huge border crossing, and so it was a huge highway. It was like a ten lane highway yeah and one day I was driving to rehearsal and I looked up and I was like oh my god that's my face it was so strange my face was up on flags all over uh, all over town lamp posts like all the lamp like lamp posts had like flags with my face on them uh, 
it was a totally, totally. And you were a VIP celebrity. In I town. was. I was famous in El Paso. People were stopping you. Are you the girl from the billboard? Yes. yes. And the lamppost. Yes. It's amazing. Is that you? <laughs> Is that you? Yes. That's me. Right there. Um, it's amazing. It's just, I mean, that's, that's a perk, right? I mean, come on. That's pretty Yeah, good sure. You know, I never used to feel that way, but now I feel that yeah. way. Yeah. Definitely. Is there anything that you feel like along this kind of journey of yours that um, particular lesson you learned or anything that you kind of went through that you're like, oh, well, this is challenging, but ultimately. Yes, actually. Tell us. Very recently. Tell, tell us and Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Hi, Jennifer. Um, I, okay, so when you're an artist, any kind of artist, so much of how you learn is getting input from other people. Uh -huh. You have to have teachers, you have mm -hmm. to have coaches, you have to have people who are giving you advice and giving you input so that you can improve and that you can get better. And many of these people are experts in their field and you have mm -hmm. to listen to them. You have mm -hmm. to be open to hearing their advice and trying to apply some mm -hmm. of it. Because what we do is an external, like we do it for other people. Yeah. So if they don't like it, what are you doing, right, right? Right, right, But I just, like literally weeks ago, just realized that for me that had transformed into asking for permission mm. to do what I wanted to do the way I wanted to do it. Yeah. Instead of being uh -huh. just open to advice and input, I was, everything I did, I was like, well, but is that okay? Is it okay if I sing it like that? And I could do it like this if you really want. You know, and I realized that I was was making me very insecure and it was making me doubt myself mm. because I was afraid to take any step without asking for permission. Mm. And I am done asking <laughs> for permission. That's a doodle. I'm done I'm done. I'm done. And it actually um, resulted from a, a argument with a professional contact <laughs> who shall remain nameless. Uh -huh. But you know who you are. <laughs> um, and I just, I was like, I, I'm done. I'm done asking for permission to be who I am. I'm done asking for permission to do it the way I want to do it. If you don't like it, tell me what you don't like. And if I think you're right, I will apply your advice. And if not, I really don't care what you and I'm, I'm just done. I'm done asking for advice. So was it... I'm done, so, not advice. I'm done asking for permission. Sorry. So how is that received by this um, professional contact? Oh, well, I don't know because I'm not really in communication. Uh, but uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm singing better. I literally have had like a singing breakthrough. And I think it's because I'm like... Confident about oh, what you're doing. Well, you're... just I, I'm not doing... Is this okay? Is it okay? I'm not yeah. doing that anymore. I'm like, here's what I do. Take it or leave it. And I, I literally have had like a huge singing breakthrough just in the last like month or two. It's such a fine line, I feel like, when you're a performer and you know that like you're there as kind of an interpreter mm -hmm. music and, and you have a director and you have so not to say that like no I'm Steven, I'm never listening to any director. No, of course, that's yeah, the problem. And, but it's being able to say, This is my interpretation of this piece, this is what I want to do with this character. Right. Right, and putting it out there. Well, and that's exactly, and that's where the the struggle comes from. I think in exactly that, in that you have to be flexible, because you never know who the director's going to be. You never know who your colleagues are going to uh, be. You and your, if you and a, you know, the tenor have a scene mm -hmm. together, you don't know what their interpretation right. of the scene is, and so you both have to be flexible and be willing to give and take. But that doesn't equal asking for permission. Mm. They're two different things. Mm. And I had somehow confused him. Do you feel like this new perspective and stance is going to keep people off? <laughs> I mean, maybe. I think you have to present yourself. You have to be willing to be flexible. Uh -huh, and you have to be uh -huh. open. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, you can't be, you have to be, I think you have to be willing to do what's best. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And if your idea is the best idea, you have to be willing to fight for it. And if someone else's idea is the best idea, you have to be willing to say your idea is better than mine, yeah. regardless of your idea. And I think if you just are really um, 
confident about that and you're willing to acknowledge when even if your idea is best, it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to give up some things, mm -hmm. then you're fine and you won't. You don't want to be disrespectful to people. Um, I love this, but. though, because then at least you know you're kind of, like you're claiming your own expertise yeah. and, and what you do. And you are such a professional and you are someone I would think people would appreciate just bringing something to the table right off the bat without being wishy-washy about it or without kind of searching for permission. Right. I would think. Well, and you can't, but would. you can't please people. You can't, right, you right. Can't, like in yeah. an audition, you know this, yeah. you can't walk into the room and be thinking like, how do I sing exactly what they want to hear? How do I do it exactly mm. the way they want to do it? They want to hear it. Instead of going, look, this is what I do. I'm going to do it the best way I do it. I'm going to be the best me you've heard. Yes. Yes. Um, I because learned that can't. lesson too. Well, it's not because it's not about being a mind reader, obviously. Right. And it's also, um, oh, I have a joke I had it not, and now it flew out. Um, but it's, it's being, bringing your, your own, yeah, your own take on things. You know, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I do well. And it's a relief for the people on the other side of the right. table. And I think that, and I don't know if it's just in, in schools or like training or education where there's so much stress placed on like, okay, well, if you're trying out for this show, this is the type of music that they want. And this is exact, and, and they almost are training you to get into the heads of like what these people want. And not to say that you're going to go audition for Rent with an opera song that wouldn't make sense. No, you have to choose something right. But if you're focusing instead, if the number one priority is like, I'm just going to go in there and show these people what I could do, they're going to be relieved. Be like, oh, oh. Well, some of I that. I don't have to figure this out. Or Well, I mean, some of that goes back to the conversation we were having about college, about schools. Yeah. In that, like, you go and you take classes in, like, singing and performance where you get graded. Yeah. yeah. So you have to do what the teacher's yes. asking you to do because yeah. you need yeah. to get a good grade. Yeah. And the teachers also have an agenda. Yeah. The teachers yeah. have a position to protect. Mm hmm So they have to, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 they yeah, have yeah, a, yeah. They have their own brand of what they do that they're selling. And so they have to protect and fight for that, and you have to make them happy. And so it mm -hmm. sets up this routine, this habit of mm -hmm. how do I do what you want me to do so that I get a good grade, but that's not what performance is about. That's not what actual art is. Right, yes. Oh, my God, yes. So that's the other reason why, like, I don't know that school is the right. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know how I would have done it. But I don't think it's the right way to do it, really. It's interesting because the singing teacher that I had at NYU, who I chose to study up with five years, six years after I was out of NYU, also who was my teacher for like six years. Um, and it took me that long to kind of stand up to some of that when he would suggest songs for me to sing for right. auditions. And always I would just listen to him and be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, oh, okay, yeah, sure, you yes. bars for me, yes, yes, yes. Right. And he started giving me songs that I knew I wasn't getting cast as parts like that. And I right. knew that it wasn't, it might have been like, yes, I could hit those notes. This has nothing to do with like the parts that I get. And he had never seen me perform in a show, ever. Even though I did stuff in the city, he never came to me perform. So, so he didn't really know who you were as a performer. And I worked with him for eight years, and I really liked him as a person. And as a teacher, he like expanded my range so much. And technically, he was a really wonderful teacher for me at that point in time. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I would say to him, like, no, you don't understand. If I go into a room with this selection, I'm not showing them that I am funny, that I'm not, that I, you know, and this right. could be a good backup. Like, yes, I should have a soprano song in there when they want to hear something contrasting. But, right. like, if I tell you that I have an audition for blank, I, I know, I know what I need to go in there right. and kind of do first and foremost, even if it's not exactly on par with, like, the, the style of the show or, like, the leads of the show. Right. Um, because ultimately I just want to go in there and like be memorable and hopefully if, if I'm not right for the show they're going to think of me for something else. Right. And once I 
stopped working with him and found a different teacher and where I kind of called the shots a bit more, mm-hmm. I guess we could say. And I was bringing stuff in and I would, he would take stuff out that he thought was right for me. And then I would ultimately feel like, oh, I think this is a really good fit or I don't think this is at all. Right. Um, and stepped into the fact that like, oh, I'm owning who I am as a performer, what I get cast as, what I know people notice about me. Um, that's when the phone would ring and, and I would get these auditions out of nowhere because they remember me from right. the auditions and put them in the book. Right. Amazing. And that's what you want. That is what you want. Just standing up for yourself. Yeah. So you have to you have to go in there and show them who you are. Mm-hmm. And if you're busy trying to show them that you can be just like someone else, you're never going to be as good right. as that other person who they have in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm putting this on the screen from Jennifer. She's How many languages can I speak? I speak French. I speak enough Italian to survive in Italy. I um, speak a little bit of Russian. When I'm drunk, I speak beautiful Russian. <laughs> um, I sing in about 10 languages quite proficiently. Um, German, I understand a lot of German, but I can't really speak it. But I just sing in it so much that I know I, I know what a lot of the words mm-hmm. are. Um, but I sing in English, of course, French, German, Italian, Russian, Czech, Spanish, uh, Swedish, Latin, of course, and I'm missing one. There's another language I think I say. So it's totally blowing my mind right now. Because there's so much great rep in all of those different different fields. Um, how how much of the language do you need to kind of learn in order to sing it efficiently? I think it depends on the person. Yeah. Uh, you have to pronounce it yeah. correctly okay. um, because it sounds horrible. I mean, I've heard people who have really bad diction language yeah, and yeah. it's miserable to listen yeah. to. So you have to understand the shape of the language. You have to be very familiar with it. Um, you have to know what you're singing about. So yeah. even if you don't speak the language, you have to know what every word means. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because like there's a great German word, Schmerz, which means pain. <laughs> like you dumped me and now I'm filled with Schmerz, you know. And if you I don't think. know that that means that, if you think it means you know flower, you don't right, sing it the same. Right, like you have right. to know what you're saying. Right. So so you have to you have to know what every word means. You have to. As you're saying it, you can't be translating it in your uh-huh. head. You have to really know. But that doesn't mean you have to necessarily speak the language. Right, 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 right. Um, it definitely helps. Um, like, I know I didn't go and audition for what they call a best contract in Germany, um, where a lot of young singers go over to Germany and take a, what's called a best contract. It's like a year-round contract. You sing a ton of different roles. You're basically mm. like a house singer. Oh, wow. And I never did that because I didn't speak German. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, I can't, I can't do that because yeah. they'll ask me if I speak German, and I don't. So I wish I had taken studied uh, German. Um, so that was definitely something that kind of helped me back a little bit. But yeah, it sounds like it's fairly necessary <laughs> that you know if you want to be a professional opera singer. And Jennifer, that's interesting about your friend who's in school for opera. Definitely sent her the recording of this. Um, yeah, I would strongly recommend German. Mm-hmm. Um, Italian, it's really hard for non-Italian singers to work in Italy. I mean, they do it. Yeah. They do it, but it's actually because um, unions are very powerful uh-huh. in Italy, and there's a lot of reasons why, but it's rare for, I wouldn't say super rare, but it's, you don't work, Rarish. it's very common to work in German-speaking countries, and okay. Austria and Switzerland and Germany, so learning German is really important. Okay. I would have no idea even how to wrap my head around learning. Yeah, I mean, if I met a 15-year-old who was like, I think I want to be an opera singer when I grow up, I'd be like, great, take German. (laughs) Take German right now. Take German. That's amazing. Amazing. Um, Okay, good. So that's what we're talking about. Um, And this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, we're. Um, Jennifer, I know you had another uh, question that was probably pertaining to something that we were talking about earlier, and then you said, never mind. Um, so if, uh, if you want to go back to that. 
two languages I'm laughing. Tagalog English? No, it's Tagalog. Oh, wow. Have you sung opera? No. <laughs> I have sung in um, Maori, though. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's the uh, indigenous population of New Zealand. And the... How do you even... Are there, like, a Rosetta Stone for, like... <laughs> how do you even... Uh, uh, I don't know. They they just... Someone taught us how to pronounce it. Amazing. Oh, Jennifer, I was just saying, I know you, you, put, you submitted a question from something it sounded like we were talking about earlier, and then you put never mind. Um, you just wrote, like, what did that stem from? So uh, feel free to just read any of the questions that the panel has. But, um, and if anyone wants to ask any questions of Vanessa, the opera singer, um, we have about 10 I like minutes. Like, I like the music. Opera singer. Opera singer. Opera singer. Um, oh, it's okay. It's just, it's just incredible. So, so everyone feel free to submit their question. Um, we'll definitely, we'll definitely have time for like one or two more questions. Um, but I, part of the reason why I started Grown Ups Gigs, the series that I'm running, is because I feel like a lot of the time the challenges and really the inside scoop and the money stuff is very glossed over. Yeah. When people talk about being an artist, being a singer, being a writer, whatever, whatever. And I kind of make it a point that the people that I interview are like, this is kind of, this is their own way to say. Mm -hmm. They're not, and I, and I love that we talked about that earlier, that like, you can tell people like, oh, what do you really do? do? You really and do? they expect yeah. you to say, I'm a waitress or like, right. whatever. And you, I'm a temp. No, no, yeah. I'm an opera, I'm an opera singer. singer. Right. Um, so without disclosing anything that you're comfortable, that you're uncomfortable with, can you talk a little bit about what kind of the finances are like yeah. and and how that affects your life? Right. <laughs> well, it's it's uh, changed mm -hmm. for sure. Um, a big, really important part of me becoming a singer was I met some very wealthy patrons mm -hmm. who gave me lots of money. Interesting. For a few years. Okay. To take, and I mean, those were years when I was working as a temp. I was working part time as a temp, but I basically, I won't go into it, but I met these people. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, have vast fortunes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, uh -huh. What was a lot of money to me is not very much money to uh -huh. them. Not that it's not appreciated. Thank you. Um, but um, I basically just asked them for money, mm -hmm. and it was. Terrifying, yeah. and I felt like they were going to be really angry at me, and uh, I thought it was going to be very humiliating. But I reached a point where I was like, I can't work a forty-hour week, answering phones and being a temp and doing all this other stuff, and still have time to get good enough to be a singer. I need to sing full time to be good enough to be a full-time singer. And I lived in a you know, terrible apartment in Brooklyn. My right. rent was two hundred sixty-seven dollars a month. No, it was a three. It was a three-bedroom apartment for eight hundred dollars a month. It was. But the scary we were talking about. The radiator, the girl, you know, gangs was falling through the, the floor. Street. It was right. like there were gangs in the street. So yeah. it was not a nice place to live. I was young. I was in my twenties, you know. And um, but I basically just asked them for money. I I wrote up a proposal. I said, "This is how I want to spend the money." Amazing. This is Amazing. how much money I need for voice lessons. This is how much money I need for rent. This is what I propose to do with the money. This is how long I think I need to do this for to get good enough to do it. These are the auditions I want to do. This is how much money I want. Please send it to me. <laughs> and I mean, they said you, yes. You made like a business plan. I you did. Made, I, did. That's, I mean, that's exactly what you did. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. And wow. I figured Amazing. the worst thing that could happen is that they would yell at me and tell uh -huh. me to never ask them for money again uh -huh. and it would be humiliating and then it would be over right like I'm a I do live theater I'm humiliated <laughs> people every night all the time right um and I figured maybe the best thing that could happen was they would read the proposal and throw it in the garbage and yes. I would never hear from them again right. and instead they sent me like $10,000 and ten thousand dollars when your rent is three hundred so, a month is like I lived on fifteen thousand dollars a year for years. 
and you didn't have to do all the bullshit. Jobs and I would do, I would, what I would do is I would take short temp jobs. I'd uh -huh. take like a two month temp job uh -huh. and save up just a little bit of money. And then with their supplemental income, I would pay for voice lessons and pay for headshots and pay for pianist fees for auditions uh -huh. and all that other stuff. And then I would take two or three months and I would not work a day job. So I kind of worked it out. Um, and then wow. by the time I was 26, I was making a living as a singer. The best story ever, I think. And because I mean, now. I mean, now, I'm not going to lie. I mean, now, like, I'm married. My yeah. husband has a very stable job. We don't, right. you know, have a huge income, but it's right. a stable income. Right, right. So and you're our you business has taken a hit since 2008, as uh -huh. many fields mm -hmm. have. So my income definitely dropped mm -hmm. uh, dramatically after that. Um, and I, I would be okay uh -huh. without a stable income mm -hmm. from spouse, but now I have health insurance. Yay! Which I would not otherwise have. I didn't have health insurance for like 10 years. Scariest so, which is very ever. terrifying. Don't do it, Don't you guys. Do it. Don't but do it. There was no other... Union. Right, but there was no, I mean... Expensive. Yeah, and I mean, even though it's like affordable, it's still really... <laughs> I mean, when you're living on $15,000 a year... It's... The highest plan is for, for the two of us, $1,200 right. for a couple... For like the most cover, you know, and that's like, and then the least care. You're right. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Yep. So now we have, now I have health insurance, which is delightful. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I know at least the rent is going to get paid every month. Right. Without question. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Some other bills might have to get. You know. But thank aside. you for the honesty. But, in that, and that's right. But we're fine. Mm -hmm. You know, and um. And some of that also is because I had to take a two-year break. We have three minutes left. I was yeah. in a terrible car accident and had to take two years off, which, thank God, I was married to someone who had a stable income yeah. with that. So, I mean, that, if I had been on my own and had not, because I couldn't work for two years. Right. And so, if I had not been able to do that, that would have been, I would have to move back home with my parents. Oh, my God, and health insurance and whatever that would have been with. Forget it. Forget it. Been Forget it. So, I mean, that was a huge life disruption, and those happen, as we mm -hmm. all know too well. Mm -hmm. um, and having stability in my life definitely helped it's, with that. And he additionally is just a great husband. Yeah, so he is. Really nice. He's a nice guy. <laughs> um, and so supportive and sweet. Right, it's right, right. Nice. But I mean, I but I've been supporting myself as a singer for ten years. I like that. Um, you literally just really blew my mind open. Um, you know, when you think of careers in the arts where you're a performer, I think that like. Think so in the box, or it's like unless you get hired for a show, <laughs> you're not able to bring in money, um, right. unless you do all these other sort of bullshit jobs. Right. Um, so to hear you say that, like, you know what, you you had some connections, you knew that the money that you needed in order to really devote yourself to to your training, mm -hmm. ultimately when you were younger, right. um, was not going to be uh, at such a uh, stress point or pain point for the people that you were asking for the money for and I think hearing that it was more than just like an email or a phone call being like hey can I have ten thousand dollars no I'm it right. was a I'm offering you like this is a business presentation right you have the opportunity to um, buy into <laughs> this business well, which is and my it, career and it weren't I mean they essentially supported me I mean, it was a very frugal existence, uh -huh, but they essentially uh -huh. supported me for like two and a half years, and then I made my Met debut when I was 26. Oh my God! I, I mean, and there's no way imagine. there is literally. I mean, it, without question, I wouldn't have done that oh at that point without their help. So, so I think this could apply to anyone. Um, hi, Jennifer. Thanks hi. for hanging out, not being scared. Hi, um, I think this could apply to to anyone that is pursuing this type of creative career, especially from the performance stage, or even not, honestly, that it's like, what are you doing that is really sustaining you and not allowing you to give as much as you need to in order to progress in the career that you care about? Right. And how can you, um, what can you think of otherwise that you could do that would be less of a, of a drain? Um, and man, putting together a business proposal like that. I mean, and, and I, that could I was be like 23. Amazing. I know. I, I, now I look back and I'm like, I can't believe I had the balls to do I that. mean, and now, and now it's almost easier because of Kickstarter.
shirt or an indigo right. and That's whatever true. that like you could you know that would be amazing it would be kind of amazing it yeah. would be amazing and i know that i would love to um support and back you know the artists that i really like yeah go do your thing like your art is important to me and right. um allow people the opportunity to help right. and don't be scared and don't, of the no and never be afraid to ask yeah Yay. it never hurts to ask Yay! On that note, bye. On that note, that is it. Go visit me at WhenIGrowUpCoach.com, Vanessa at VanessaCaridi.com. Um, you could scroll up to the top of the live chat to get our link. Um, and who am I here with next? I'm with artist Jesse Smith Larkin um, next month, and all of that information is on WhenIGrowUpCoach.com/gug. Um, but she's she does like all sorts of different of art it's kind of mind-blowing she like illustrates um kids books and she made like a jelly bean dress for a big thing and like Whoa. she does lots of different things so it'll be really fun and she'll be joining me from chicago i think um so that is it we're so weird stop being weird you guys <laughs> you're <laughs> me out um have a wonderful wonderful day thank you bye